Uh, so good morning. Well, I guess good evening for some. Good morning for some. Uh, I am. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and to be able to talk with you guys a little bit about my experience in subcontracting and Odeo, uh, what we found um, as we worked through some clients. My hope is to make this more of an open forum collaboration kind of uh, presentation. I want to kind of go over a little bit of what I found, uh, some issues that I found, what we were able to come up with solution wise, uh, and then talk a little bit about the customer's journey um, <clears throat> that we had with this. So with that, um, the first thing that I wanted to kind of talk through is the difference between subcontracting and contract manufacturing. So with subcontracting, of course, you're going to be sending out material to a, um, a subcontractor. They're going to be creating um, basically the finished good or a sub-assembly, um, a lower level assembly of a finished good and, and sending it back to you. Um, the difference with contract manufacturing, of course, is that the contract manufacturer actually manuf uh, manufactures the entire finished good um, from the OEM and then sends it back to the original OEM. Um, I'm not a huge uh, proponent of contract manufacturing. In all reality, it's actually ends up being cheaper to just buy the finished good directly through um, the the supplier or the vendor rather than um, uh, having them as part of kind of your company or your team um, and having to get those contracts signed and so forth. So um, my experience, we use subcontracting a lot. Um, it can be anywhere from you know, multiple pieces that need to go out to multiple subcontracting. Sometimes you have a subcontractor that drops ships to another subcontractor and then back to the OEM. So that's a little the difference between subcontracting and contract manufacturing. A lot of times you're sending materials out for the subcontracting. That's your actual uh, your raw material, your owned inventory. Um, and the difference is contract manufacturing. Usually they own all the inventory and they're just producing the finished good for you. <clears throat> so why do we use subcontracting or contract manufacturing? A lot of it is to help with the cost um, of the product, uh, the end result. A lot of times it's because you can get it um, uh, for a lot quicker uh, due to resource capacity, um, the time of year for your business, um, and so forth. And then a lot of times you can cut down costs drastically by sending products um, overseas and then having them come back to you. Um, we used it a lot in my past because of seasonal work. Um, we had less employees at certain times. And so there were times that we would bring it in-house and we would manufacture it in-house. But a lot of times we would send things out because we had such fluctuation in resources. So a really quick kind of about the client that uh, we learned a lot about uh, subcontracting within Odoo is um, Ursa Major. So they are a propulsion company. They build rockets. Um, they are located in um, Colorado uh, here in the United States. Uh, they, they have a few unique situations. Um, they have a subcontractor that owns um, Ursa Major material that we had actually had to set up a location for that subcontractor so we could actually see exactly what they had in their inventory. Um, and then we built Odoo around the fact that when a purchase order gets created for the subcontracted um, finished good, it would actually go out and say, hey, does this subcontractor have enough material or do we need to actually send more material with that um, that raw like the raw material with the finished good out to the subcontractor. Uh, this company basically is heavy, heavy in engineering. Um, they are somewhat of a startup um, company that are trying to kind of figure out exactly um, what they can do inside of Odoo um, to get them to the point where they can be um, acquired at some point in time and. <clears throat> build rockets for our future. So uh, we had to be really, really agile and flexible to figure out, you know, sometimes they're going to manufacture it in house, sometimes they're going to send it out, sometimes they have to send it out to, you know, one subcontractor one time and another one the next time, um, just depending on lead times, um, and when they're able to produce and when they're not able to based on their schedule um, and their master schedule. 
So we had to build the system up uh, in order to be able to do that. So <clears throat> one of kind of the downfalls that we found is that when you're having a subcontracting bill of materials, you link that subcontracting bill of materials to an actual vendor. It's always associated to that vendor. So um, one of the gaps that we had found while doing all of this was that um, you had to go in and manually switch out your subcontractors um, uh, if you wanted like your MTO, if you wanted to automatically drive your, uh, your purchase order to be able to have um, that subcontractor pulled up, you had to kind of manually go in and shift that. Um, so still things that we're working on throughout this process, uh, but Ursa Major was a great company to work with to be able to kind of drill down exactly how to be able to use subcontracting um, in their uh, manufacturing world. Again, extremely heavy in engineering. Things are constantly changing. Uh, even if a part went out to subcontracting, <clears throat> there were times that the drawing had changed um, in the middle of all of it. So being able to have Odoo to have that communication with the vendor back and forth. Um, uh, so we needed to set all of that up where they can um, send the drawings out. Um, and of course, this is an ITAR client. So we needed to make sure that we kept um, security and ITAR related resources um, secure inside of Odoo. Um, so that was always um, fun to do. So. So some of the issues that I had found along the way. <clears throat> Kind of with how subcontracting is set up right now inside of Odoo, it can be a little clunky and hard to navigate uh, with accounting and reconciliation. When that uh, SBC transfer happens or that um, manufacturing order, I like to call it the ghost, um, because sometimes you can find it um, if it's open, uh, depending on how you could have the configuration set up, uh, you have to, it basically kind of just disappears and goes away. Um, so for accounting and reconciliation, there's nothing that links back to the actual originating manufacturing order or the originating purchase order. It's just a journal entry saying that, you know, we sent something out under an SBC uh, transfer, but then it doesn't ever link back up. So it was really difficult for the accounting team to kind of figure out how to reconcile all of that whip um, uh, of the subcontracting. Uh, usability out of the box is is very confusing. Me coming from um, a past ERP world and then coming into Odoo, pretty pretty new. Um, I uh, I started with OSI last, actually not last this January. So I am somewhat new to Odoo and trying to kind of figure out how Odoo works with subcontracting comparatively to all of the past. Um, usability out of the box again with this whole kind of ghost manufacturing order in the background that's happening while the product is out with a subcontractor that was very new for me i had never seen really that before um usually it's a service provided subcontracting is just a service uh, but uh, odoo has it set up where it's actually a manufacturing order in the background um, and then that manufacturing order gets closed based on configuration and how you set it up automatically when those parts are received back into the oem uh, setting up routes and operations is extremely important. One of the things we had found that we had to keep on going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth through testing and, and walkthroughs with the client is that if your routes um, are not set up correctly, uh, nothing will happen or you'll receive errors. Um, one of the big things is if your operation types and routes aren't set up correctly, you won't get an out transfer meaning that you'll have an in-transfer to bring those products back in, but there's never an out-transfer to actually send the raw material out to uh, the subcontractor. So some solutions that we found. Um, because I come from the user's world, I come from the person who uses the system day in and day out, uh, as well as um, I was a past kind of ERP manager um, at my last company. So you know, I was helping users of how to use you know, the ERP system. So one of the things that I had found is creating smart buttons inside of Odoo um, is extremely usable and, and great functionality for um, the client on their side. So we were able to, on the purchase order itself, it would automatically show the delivery. So you weren't needing to go and find the transfers under the inventory overview screen. Um, 
And then also the subcontracting operation type, um, we added that for visibility on the Kanban view. So then the user can actually see what is waiting to go out for subcontracting as well as what we're waiting to come back in. Um, and that was extremely helpful for the client. Um, we also set it up to auto-complete the SBC MO. Uh, with that, it wasn't like this was just kind of sitting here because one of our other clients, we have it where the manufacturing order is there. It has, it shows that there's a subcontracting manufacturing order. You actually have to go into that subcontracting manufacturing order and complete it. That adds a multitude of steps for the user <clears throat> and just doesn't work. So um, doing that where it auto completes when it gets received in back to the OEM um, is extremely helpful for the client. And then also adding in source document. So right now um, at certain transfers and certain forms inside of Odoo, it will reference the source document. What we found is that if we actually had that first as a hyperlink, so the user can actually click on that source document, but also the originating source document. So if it's a PO originating from an MO, we made sure to have that originating source document on there. All transfers associated to that PO or that SBC MO, um, we also put in as a hyperlink. So no matter what screen you are on inside of Odoo, you could click on that originating PO and know where it was actually coming from. Um, that was again, very useful uh, for the client. So <clears throat> helpful hints along the way that I have learned being somewhat new to Odeo, but also understanding what the client's needs are um, based on my past experience with manufacturing. Uh, routes and rules, extremely important side of Odeo uh, and making sure that those are set up correctly. The subcontracting bill of materials. Uh, you know, if you don't have the subcontracting bill of materials set up correctly with the right subcontractor vendor associated to the subcontract bill of materials, it won't link onto the inventory tab um, and, and the subcontractor. So that kind of makes it a little um, funky if you're not able to make sure that those link together because it won't actually create a PO to the right subcontractor or it won't even create one because it says you don't have a subcontractor. <clears throat> so making sure that that's actually set up. This is kind of where this is, is vendor listed as a subcontractor uh, and making sure that you select the variant um, so it is selected the checkbox on underneath of that inventory um, vendor. SBC transfers are ghosts, that's kind of what we call them depending on the configuration. Uh, so it's really understanding the concept of SBC, where to go and find those transfers um, and then setting up configuration um, from the user side so they don't even have to worry about it because in all reality they should not even in my opinion, should never even have to go to that SBC uh, transfer or MO. <clears throat> Reconciliation of WIP for subcontracting, time consuming for the accounting department. We're making some um, customizations and variations uh, to kind of our uh, baseline for this to make sure that journals for WIP um, is set to reconcile, but we're trying to get it where it's actually auto reconciling. So it pulls everything up for subcontracting into one journal item. So it's much easier for accounting to reconcile at the end of the month. Um, again, we customized uh, for originating document on journal entries and journal items, again, for usability and visibility for um, the client. And then, um, like I just said, we're setting it up in a customization for auto reconciliation, which will help them greatly. It'll cut down <clears throat> many, many hours of work for them trying to kind of just search and find um, to reconcile. Um, another thing to make sure of is is making uh, is paying attention to stock moves, making sure that it is going, you know, it's going out to the subcontractor, coming into WIP, and then coming back in um, to inventory. Uh, making sure that actually happens, so the journal items are that are associated with those um, are recognized, um, but also for visibility from the manufacturing floor. Um, from inventory that they really know where their parts are um, and, and what's going on with them. And then um, you can have multiple bill of materials. So uh, with Ursa Major, we have bill of materials that are uh, manufactured, so make, buy, um, and then multiple um, subcontracting vendors associated to that specific bill of materials. So, you know, trying to figure out and finagle our way through this system to figure out how that was all set up. Um, 
but yeah, the other thing is, is the sequencing. So if you have something as a make, as that's your first priority, um, and then the other time will be buy to maybe send it out to a subcontractor, that sequencing is really, really important inside of Odoo because it'll always go for, you know, the first in the sequence, um, especially if you have MTO selected. Um, so that's something just to kind of pay attention to and note. Um, so that's really all I had is I just kind of wanted to go over exactly what I had come up with and, and from a user side, uh, you know, how subcontracting can work. Um, so I kind of want to open up the floor to questions, what you guys have come up with um, along the way, uh, what lessons learned that you've had, and, you know, kind of uh, have that open forum right now. So I'm open to any questions or, or thoughts. Thank you, Melody, for giving us such a great presentation and elaborate uh, the issues and the solution with us, especially with the accounting, usability, and the setting up the routes and operations types and helpful tips. Those are very helpful for the people, you know, who see the subcontract as a very complex subject, but you discover very well. I personally like it. Thank you. You're very welcome, Babesh. Thank you. Come on, somebody's got to have a question out there. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Does, does everybody time. use subcontracting? I mean, is this something that everybody uses daily that they talk with their clients about? Or is this kind of a an unknown out there? Uh, you know, I'm, that's what I'm kind of curious because I know some clients use it, some clients don't. Some clients like to steer way far away from it. Um, and figure out their own kind of internal process to figure it out. So, you know, what has been people's um, experience with it? Okay, we will wait for the few more minutes. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so far no questions on no. the record or Zoom chat or the YouTube. Please feel free to share your knowledge on uh, the MRP side. And if you have any discover the, the issue and you have resolved, then it would be great to bring with us. Yeah, for sure. Well, Bavesh, if there is no questions or anything, I hope everyone has a good evening and a good morning. Um, and thank you so much for letting me come on and present. And it's been a joy. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Melody. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.